Welcome to Systems Alliance. My name is Jexy, and in this video, we're going to go over the news that during Disney's Investor Day, they finally dropped the information that we all wanted, which was the price point and the features of Disney's new online streaming service, Disney Plus. So everyone knew this was coming for a while now. The streaming wars have started. Obviously, Amazon Prime is already in there, Netflix, Hulu, a whole bunch of individual stations are in there. You got DC Universe with the DC Comic Universe and all of that. They have their stuff. I mean, you also have sports stuff already kind of still there streaming like MLB.TV. So for whatever you want, there seems to be a company that is willing to provide it to you but never quite in the way that we quite want to yet, but I think we're getting there. And obviously a big player, someone who's the biggest player in the movie industry by far is Disney. And we knew it was coming. We knew Disney Plus once announced was going to be hopefully a game changer, but we weren't quite sure. And the reason we weren't sure is because of all the rumors that were going around. First, we heard that, okay, they're not gonna be able to get the rights to all the Star Wars, specifically the original trilogy. So if you want all your Star Wars, it wouldn't be worth purchasing Disney Plus to get that. There was talk of, well, they're not gonna have all the movies available you know, in the Disney vault. In the age of the internet, it's like, hey, do you want your stuff downloaded, possibly illegally? Do you want people just like sharing, copying stuff? Or do you just want to give people, people the easiest access to your content as possible? And Disney chose that. So this past week, Disney announced on their Disney Investor Day that November 12th, so later this year, 2019, November 12th will be the date that Disney Plus launches and will be available to be purchased by all of us. And here's a big thing, all of the content that you have on your Disney Plus will be able to be downloaded for your own personal offline use. So that's huge right there. I mean, that's something that people have kind of been doing anyway, but to make it easier for you to do that, I think that's huge. All of a sudden you can bring, say, Aladdin on the go with you, or Star Wars on the go, or the MCU on the go. That is huge. Another interesting feature is that unlike Hulu, it will not have an ad supported option. So, okay, that kind of got everyone thinking, so what's the price gonna be? Because that's kind of been the question all along. I mean, Amazon Prime, what's that, 120 bucks for a year? So like $10 a month, but of course you're getting all that Amazon you know, free one day and two day shipping that comes with that. And then on top of that, all the content that they have from everywhere and then the, the ability to just purchase that straight from there. So Amazon, you know, obviously one of the big elephants in the room. Then you have Netflix and Netflix has pretty much everything. So obviously that's gonna be a huge thing too. If you only wanted Amazon Prime Video though, that would just be $8.99 a month. So that's still a pretty good deal for all the content they get. Plus you can easily add HBO and other channels onto that for a discounted price. And all of a sudden you have more TV and movies than you could ever watch. Netflix, of course, just raised their price from 11 to $13. So for $13, you get everything that Netflix has to offer. And of course, once you factor on TV shows and movies and how fast they come out and that you pretty much get everything, Netflix is a pretty good deal. I mean, there, there's no way around it. Netflix is kind of the gold standard, uh, if you will, for streaming services. Hulu, of course, without ads is $11.99 a month and with ads is $5.99 a month. So you're still paying. If you're like me, you remember when Hulu was free and you would just have to wait a week to watch it. Those were the good old days. Obviously, a lot of people like myself, we don't use Hulu anymore because of that. And there's so many other options, but Hulu is still a big deal. And interestingly enough, was partially owned by Disney and Fox was in there too. So more on that later. So with all of these large current streaming services that we do have, the question then becomes, Disney's gotta be cheaper, right? It, it has to be cheaper. They are limited to Disney. Now, of course, they've acquired Fox, so they'll have Fox now, but they're limited to basically just Disney stuff. They can't offer you anything else. Disney kinda has limited stuff when it comes to TV, so you're not gonna get anything like that. So how are they gonna do this? Well, you know, people were thinking, oh my God, it's probably gonna be like, 10, 15, who knows, even 20 bucks a month. And only people you know, who have enough money and kids are really gonna buy it. And everyone just thought it was out of the realm of possibility for it to be affordable for everyone. Well, Disney surprised everybody by putting the price point at just $6.99 a month. Now that's if you pay monthly. If you wanna buy it for the year, it's just basically $70 or $5.83 a month. So as of right now, that is the cheapest per month out of 
pretty much anything you could buy, especially with no ads. I mean, that is a great deal. But then the second question was, okay, pricing wise, that is a great deal. But what about the content that I get? Is that price still worth the content that I get if I don't get my Star Wars, if I don't get, you know, some all the Marvel stuff, you know, what's going to come with this? And so then they revealed that too. So the plan for year one of Disney Plus is that it's going to have over 400 titles that have previously been released. So once you start thinking about Disney, Pixar, Marvel, Star Wars, yeah, there's got to be a lot of stuff that has to fit in there. Plus for original new content, 10 new movies specifically for Disney Plus and 25 new TV shows going on all throughout the first year. So they're not just dipping their toe in, they're going all in. By year five, Disney expects to have over 50 original titles, so double the 25, and obviously that's just a ton of content. You're talking about 50 new shows? I mean, people can't even watch that much, so obviously the point is to have enough diversity within those shows to make it worth people buying, and maybe given limited budgets of people, maybe this is the only thing, the only streaming service that they do buy. Or if people can afford two, maybe this is one of the two, which obviously if they can get into that market, that is huge. So obviously, as I'm sure you have heard, Disney is already developing their own uh, Star Wars and Marvel spin-off shows. And in addition to that, they're saying, Disney Plus analysts are saying, they're gonna be spending over $800 million on original new content just in the first year alone. So. That's a lot. Some other interesting shows that they confirmed that are coming, I mean, they're kind of big time stuff. I mean, you have Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Those are pretty big names and they're gonna have a TV show of them. Then they're also gonna have WandaVision between, of course, Wanda Maximoff and Vision from the MCU. Just the fact that they're announcing that stuff and it's gonna actually star the actual stars in the MCU movies, that's a pretty big get. And I mean, I know Disney, has a lot of influence over their contracts, but still, that's huge. Disney also said that all of the movies in their Disney vault, previously held in the vault, will all be available day one at launch for Disney+. Plus. So for those of you who've been waiting for those movies to come out, you buy the service, you get everything. And I think that's one of their selling points. They need to kind of wow people and get them to join. And I think they're doing a great job of it, with everything that they're saying. One thing big that Disney mentioned is that their theatrical releases will not be impacted by Disney Plus. So in other words, say Frozen, which releases later this year, Frozen 2, uh, when that comes out, it'll still come out, have its long run in theaters as Disney movies always do, and especially one that you know is gonna make a ton of money like Frozen since it made over a billion dollars the first time around. Then it's gonna hit home video. So still same length of time there. And then finally after that, it's gonna hit the streaming service. So you could be looking at seven months after, which is good. I think that's a good thing. And smart on Disney's end, because they want people to still buy the Blu-rays and, and everything like that of their stuff for the kids who want it right now, of course. But then you'll have the streaming service. And for those who don't wanna do that, but they still want something, they'll wait and they'll get it there. Now, here's the big one that a lot of you have been waiting for. At launch, day one, the entire Star Wars saga, including the original trilogy, that'll be available at launch. And this is huge because people thought, okay, there was a Turner contract that Turner had for the TV rights and they weren't giving that up, but that would prevent Disney. So clearly a deal was struck. Disney probably paid a ton of money and now they're able to provide people exactly what they want. You know, why would you provide Disney streaming service and not have all the Star Wars? It wasn't gonna turn out well. Disney execs knew that, and they did what they had to do to get those rights. And lest that you forget that Disney purchased Fox for $71 billion, The Simpsons. First 30 seasons of The Simpsons will be available day one at launch on Disney+. Plus. So yes, there are advantages to owning Fox, and I mean, where else are you gonna get that content as easy as you are with Disney+. Plus? They're putting everything, all the, the big hits that people wanna see, they're putting everything there for the Disney Plus launch. Now, of course, for Disney, there are some, I don't know if you wanna call them downsides, but let's call them a trade-off from having your stuff being on Netflix and Hulu and all of that stuff, Amazon, to transferring them over to Disney Plus, and that's your licensing fees. So analysts are estimating that Disney will lose $10 billion from licensing fees that they will no longer get from Netflix paying them to throw their Disney stuff on there. So they won't have that, but in, on the flip side, they'll have Disney Plus bringing all the new revenue that they might have lost. Who knows? 
Are they going to get as much revenue as they were from Netflix? I don't know. I mean, it's, it's a tough call. Netflix has way more subscribers, but they show more than just Disney stuff. Whereas Disney is only going to show Disney stuff. So we'll have to see how that works out. But I think Disney probably made the right call. And they're probably going to rake in more than that $10 billion lost. And as many of you know, of course, the maybe main rival to Netflix would be Hulu. And Hulu had all the major networks owning it. And so no one had a majority. So it was... Something that worked out really well. Well, Fox was a 30% owner and Disney was a 30% owner. So now Disney got that in part of their uh, purchase of Fox. So now Disney is 60% owner, majority stake in Hulu. Obviously the assumption is that Disney will seek to take 100% ownership of Hulu. And then the talk is they're gonna package Hulu, ESPN Plus, and Disney Plus all together and you'll probably get them as a discount if you want all three. And to me, that'll be interesting because will it just mean Disney's getting more money from Hulu or will it kind of mean the death of Hulu? Because why are people even going to care about Hulu if all the stuff, the Disney stuff is on Disney Plus? I mean, and then why would Disney Plus people buy Disney Plus if all the stuff is already on Hulu? They have some tough decisions to make, especially if they want to buy it all out, which I mean, they own 60%. So why not? What's the point of having a majority stake if you don't have control over everything you want to do? It'll be interesting for sure. But let me know your thoughts about this Disney Plus release, the announcement, all the features you're going to get, the price point. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Is this something you would buy? Is this something that you're not quite sure yet? You're going to have to see it first. Or is it maybe just not worth it to you? Be sure to like, subscribe, share, comment, hit me up on Twitter, and we'll catch you next time.